All right, so in this demo, we're going to be creating uh, hair and fur using groomable splines. XGen, like all other parts of Maya, will allow you to create hair and fur in a number of different ways. Uh, groomable splines are really good for short hair, animal fur, and the like. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to create some geometry to generate the hair and fur on. So we're going to make a cylinder, and I'm going to scale it up quite a bit. Uh, just about this size and then I want to rotate that cylinder around and I'm going to delete the bottom half so we're going to select all the faces on the bottom and delete them and we also want to go ahead and delete the caps okay so we're just going to delete the caps on both sides one and two and what we're left with is this little bridge looking shape um, and this this bridge shape is kind of intended to represent like the torso of a deer or uh, something of that nature. Okay, so maybe scale this guy up a little bit more. The first thing that we need to do is open our interactive groom editor. And the way that we're going to do that is by going to what's called the hotbox. The hotbox can be accessed by holding spacebar. So I'm going to hold spacebar and I'm going to go over to the generate menu. So under the Generate menu, I'm going to click on Generate. Once you've clicked Generate, you can let go of Spacebar and then decide what you want to choose. We're going to choose the Interactive Groom Editor, which you can see here. So we're going to open up the Interactive Groom Editor. And mine appear here in a separate window. Yours may appear docked over here. Uh, the problem with that is that you're going to need to access the Attribute Editor and the Groom Editor at the same time. So if yours appear docked, um, I want you to go ahead and undock it. So we're going to take the groom editor from here and just pull it off. And you can either put this on a different monitor or dock it somewhere else. I'm going to dock mine over to the left here next to the toolbar. That way you guys can see it. And with this guy open, I'm going to leave the attribute editor open as well. And what we want to do is select on our object and then we need to uh, create some groomable splines. So we're going to click on the create menu here and we're going to say interactive groom splines and when we do that uh, we're going to have a new description name to enter generator seed density etc the only thing we're interested in right now is the description name yours probably says something like description one or zero um, go ahead and rename that to what you're making so I'm going to call this fur and say create and it creates uh, something along our model. It's not really fur yet, right? It looks more like grass. Um, it's kind of sparse and brown, um, but we have a lot of powerful tools that are going to allow us to make this look a lot more like fur here in just a moment. So with the interactive groom editor open, we're going to roll out our new description, which is fur, and I'm going to roll that plus out. Then we have a description for sculpt, scale, and fur base. Um, on fur, we have something called the width scale, taper, taper start, and a whole bunch of different parameters. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, if we take this taper value up, you can see that it's going to taper the ends of those hairs to more of a point. Um, and I'm going to bring mine out to about 0 0.9. I think that's pretty good. Um, and this could be good for like stubbly beard uh, if the hairs were a bit shorter. I'll show you how to change that in just a moment. We also have a width scale. You can take the width of the hairs and scale them up a whole lot or down. I'm going to leave that at the default for now uh, of 0.1. We also have uh, under our fur we have our sculpt layer and our scale layer and fur base. So if I click on fur base here, okay, uh, underneath the fur base we have a modifier called density. The density multiplier determines really how much fur is generated on the surface. So we're going to change that density multiplier to something higher right now, maybe like 5, and hit enter. And now you can see we have a lot more hairs on the surface of this shape. Uh, they still don't behave the way that we want, but we're going to change that in just a second. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this sculpt layer. We could sculpt directly on the fur here using this sculpt layer, but I don't want to do that because uh, really the power in this editor is related to um, generating guide curves and then being able to sculpt on those and then stack sculpt layers so that we can 
interactively choose what we want to enable, uh, which will make more sense as we do it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this sculpt layer entirely. So I want to right click on the sculpt and just choose delete. You can see it made no change to the look of our fur at this moment in time because we didn't sculpt it. We have our fur, we have our scale modifier. The scale modifier lets you change the size of that hair. So you could make it really long. Like if you want to do a mohawk or something, this could work really well. Um, we're not going to, we're going to leave our scale set to one for now. Um, and what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to the fur, uh, the base sort of root description. And we're going to say uh, add modifier. And underneath of add modifier, we're going to add a guide modifier. Okay. When we do that, we get uh, a guide modifier. It does not contain any guides at the moment. We need to generate those. So go ahead and click on guide, which you just created. And in the attribute editor open over here, you now have a series of buttons. Let's go ahead and hit this create button. And the create button is going to create a whole bunch of guide shapes, which are going to determine kind of what the hair looks like as we sculpt on them. So now that we have our guides, we can roll guide out. So if you click the plus button, you'll see in guide, and you click that plus button again, you'll see sculpt, and then you click that plus button one more time, and you can see that we have a sculpt layer, just like we had before, but now we're sculpting on the guides instead of sculpting directly on the hair, which is going to save processing resources and uh, help us out in a number of other ways. So with this sculpt layer enabled, we're going to hit the edit button. That way it knows that we want to sculpt on this hair and fur. Now we need to go to the XGen tab. So we're going to go to the XGen tab up here at the top, and we have a series of tools that we can work with. Um, all of our tools are kind of located to the right of this Create Hair and Fur button. If you hover your tools, you get your tool tips, right? We have Density Tool, Place Tool, Length, Cut, Width, Twist, Comb, Grab, Smooth, Noise, Clump, Part, Freeze, and Select Tools. So all of these are going to allow us to modify our hair in different ways. The comb tool is the one that I want first. So I'm going to select on my comb tool and I'm going to get a brush. It says comb brush activated. Like any other brush in Maya, if you hold B, you can scale the brush up or down. My viewport is having an issue where you can't see the brush scaling, but I'm going to drag left and let go. And you can now see that I've scaled the brush larger. It's so large you can't see it. Scaling it down. I'm making small changes now because I can't see it while I'm scaling it. I don't know why my viewport is doing that. But with our brush a little bit bigger, I just want the brush to kind of be the size of the, the scene. Notice if I zoom out, my brush is going to hit more or less of the scene. So if you're really zoomed in, the brush stays the same size, but everything else gets larger. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. And we're going to brush these guide shapes back. Okay. Um, one important thing to note, and I think my tool settings are already set up, if you have hairs, okay, that are brushing through the surface, what you need to do is open the tool options under that brush. So I'm going to double click on the comb brush here. And you want to make sure this collide with meshes is checked. You can see that mine is. If it weren't, I'll go ahead and turn it off so you can see. Um, it's going to, it's able to kind of push those hairs. You see how it's pushing the guide shapes through the surface there? We don't want this. This is bad. So we're going to make sure that um, that collide with meshes is checked. And you can always rebrush. And then when you rebrush, it's just going to bring the hair right back up to the top of the surface. Now I'm going to brush these straight back. Um, and this is already looking more like fur, but there's a lot more that we can do here. And we will. I'm going to kind of brush them straighter like that. So the power of this system really comes in in that we can stack these sculpt modifiers. So I've got them all brushed straight back, but this is pretty uniform um, for animal fur. Most animals don't have fur that grows straight back in nice uniform rows. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a sculpt layer with sculpt layer 1 selected. And now we have sculpt layer 2. And you can see, just like in Photoshop or any other layer-based editor, um, what's nice about this is we can blend between two layers. So I'm going to click on Edit on layer 2. Now my sculpt layer 1 is safe. I'm not, I'm not working on that layer at all. I'm on sculpt layer 2 instead. And I'm going to select what is called my noise brush. 
So with my noise tool selected, I'm going to go ahead and just selectively add some noise to this fur. And you can see that it's kind of just giving the fur some randomness, which makes it look um, a lot more like an animal fur. If you add too much noise, uh, there isn't really a way to kind of go back and add less. Uh, but what you can do is just delete the sculpt layer and begin again. Once you've added um, a good amount, and I'm pretty happy with how this looks now, you can see it's not super uniform anymore. You can stop. And what's great about this is that you can now blend between these two layers. So if I drag the slider on the sculpt layer two down, at zero there's no noise. At one it's as noisy as I decided it should be. And the same thing with the comb layer. So I can drag that comb layer back. Now this is what it would look like with the noise on it, but without the comb. You can also put them both to like 50%, and that's kind of a more subtle uh, sort of a look. I'm going to bring those both back up. Um, you can change, again, things like the width of each of the hairs, the density, um, to kind of fill in more of these spaces, but this is looking pretty good, and I think it'll look better once we add our clump modifier. So you can add as many sculpt layers as you want, and you can continue to add, uh, you know, you could maybe do a part through the middle if you wanted to do that, um, or any of these types of things. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a root level modifier now that's going to affect all the sculpts that we've already done. So I'm going to click on Fur, and I'm going to say Add Modifier, and I want to add a clump modifier to this whole thing. And when I do this, what's going to happen is all the furs kind of clump up together. And this is obviously not appropriate for like deer fur or zebra, but it could work well for like an anime character where the hair is sort of in these chunky spikes. Um, and you, you can still, you know, you have more control over these. You can make them longer or shorter depending on what you need. This is too much, but if I go to my clump modifier here in the attributes, I can change the amount of the clump effect. So I'm just going to drag that down from one to something more like, there we go, point maybe one, four, and that's pretty good. Um, you can see what that looks like with it off, so if I toggle it off, the visibility of all these layers is located over here on the left, without the clumping, with the clumping. It's kind of subtle, but I think it, it adds a little bit there. Um, and then again, I can go back to fur, and if I wanted to change like the width scale, I could increase it a little bit. And now my fur is you know quite a bit denser, and it fills in some of those gaps. And this is looking pretty good, okay? Um, at this stage, we should probably go ahead and save our scene. So I'm going to say save scene as. And I'm just going to name this. I already have two in here. I'll call this Animal Fur Interactive Room 3 because I've made this demo a couple of times. And I'll say save as. And so you can see that um, this is a pretty, this interactive room editor is a pretty powerful tool. Um, as long as you have your attribute editor open, you have a lot of different properties um, that you sort of have access to. If we go back to our scale, again, we could scale all the fur quite a bit longer. That's not enough. That's too much. Um, so you can see you have a lot of control here over the end result.